Hey guys and girls, my name is Alan and welcome to this gameplay commentary. So as you can see from the note on the screen, this video is part two of, well, a continuation basically of a video that I did yesterday, or at least I uploaded yesterday. Um, and basically in that video, well, continuing in this video, is Firebase Aqua Match versus the Cat. It's an Apex mission, it was the one that featured I think two weekends ago, was it last weekend? It was the one that went to 11 waves basically, well 10 waves and extraction, so 11 altogether. And it was the one where weapons did a little bit less damage but you had a massive increase in critical hit damage. So headshots and uh, weak points would do a lot more damage. As you can see I'm using the human female infiltrator with the paw, which is an ultra rare assault rifle. And as I said in that earlier video, well yesterday's video. It uses a recharge timer rather than ammo base so because this uh, particular apex mission also had uh, no refills from ammo dumps so that's the reason why I brought the weapon along I'm using cryo ammo 2 and I'm also using assault rifle amp 2 just to try and counter out the reduced damage from the apex modifiers right so in the previous video yesterday's video I keep saying previous video but basically I did upload the video yesterday but I recorded it a couple of days before that point and that video Basically I was just talking about, well I didn't mean to but I sort of went into a bit of a rant about how the single player campaign for Andromeda wasn't that fun and I wasn't really enjoying it that much um, and that's sort of how the video went. If you're interested in my thoughts then check out the video, I'll link it in the description, I'll also link it on the screen now but basically in that video as I said I sort of went off on a bit of a tangent, I didn't mean to start the video off talking about the campaign but it just happened to go that way. Um, but anyway, uh, today's video I'm going to be talking about E3 2017. I know it's been a couple of weeks now, but I've only just sort of caught up on all the footage. Well, most of the footage. There's still one or two videos I want to check out, interviews and stuff. But for the most part, all the trailers, all the conferences, I've watched them all. And uh, so today I'm just going to be talking about that. Um, so yeah, so to start off with, well, just some other minor points I guess uh, I want to talk about before we continue. Platinum has been announced, um, Batarians have also been announced but we don't know if that means there are new characters to play or a new faction or potentially a new enemy type joining an existing faction. Uh, best guess is it's probably going to be a new character or a set of new characters that's on the horizon. Um, as I was saying in the previous video, Batarians as a first choice, a bit surprising. Hopefully Geth and Quarian aren't too far behind and Drill as well of course. I've actually heard since that um, Platinum could be as early, could be arriving as early as today, and um, by today I mean the 6th of July. I don't know if I'm going to get this video up in time, um, I'm hoping I will be able to post it today, but if I don't, then what I mean today I mean like the 6th of July. So apparently today there is a patch coming out, um, there's some word going around so far that there is a patch available. I haven't yet jumped online so I haven't had a chance to verify it for myself, but if there is a patch I will of course do a patch breakdown and post that to Acorn Vision. Uh, so if you're interested to hear my thoughts on the patch and obviously talk about the changes then check out the video on Acorn Vision. As I said, haven't recorded it yet but if there is a patch and there are patch notes I will do a breakdown, I will do an analysis and I will post to Acorn Vision. So check out that channel in a few days time if you happen to hear that the patch is live. Obviously I'll probably talk about the patch a little bit here as well but more detailed discussion will be on Acorn Vision. Okay so yeah at the moment I'm sort of semi watching Wimbledon while doing this gameplay commentary quite an interesting match. Um, it's funny, I, I'm not really a big sports person, but I always watch the big events when they come around. So every year I watch Wimbledon when it's on TV, when I'm not working obviously. Um, I'll always watch things like the World Cup um, and then the Olympics and the Winter Olympics as well. And yeah, as I said, I'm not really a sporty kind of person. Um, I, can't, I do enjoy watching sports, but I can't watch it all the time. So I don't follow anything in particular on the regular, but when the big events come around, I always spend time watching it and that's sort of my quota for, you know, for the for the year or whatever um, and, and yeah so just yeah it's quite nice weather at the moment in Wimbledon makes a nice change sometimes we get like really you know crappy cloudy uh, rain and obviously they have to keep covering up the courts and everything so it's quite nice to have a, a summary you know full of sunshine and uh, not have to worry about the rain but anyway if you're not interested in Wimbledon I will stop talking about it now but I just thought I'd let you know what I'm doing. So Wimbledon is just constantly on in the background whenever I'm awake. Um, and it's kind of my kind of sport because gameplay doesn't really start until like 1 in the afternoon, which is perfect. So if I was a, if I was a sporting star, I guess that would be very nice for me. Uh, lunchtime start and then finish around, I don't know, 8, 7, whatever time it is. So it's not too, well, that's Wimbledon. I don't know about the rest of the, uh, the, the tournaments, but Wimbledon is... Uh, Wimbledon is special as well to me because obviously it's it, you know it's, a, it's, it's held in England, so you know I'm a Brit and therefore it's it's kind of a big thing. Uh, I don't really watch like the other Opens. I don't watch the French Open and the American Open and stuff like that. As I said, I only watch certain stuff, um, and if it's in my backyard, then obviously 
pay a bit more attention to it. But anyway, okay, so moving on. Videos kind of dwindling now and I haven't really talked about anything E3 related. So, I guess the first thing is who do I think did the best? Um, funnily enough, I think Ubisoft um, gave the best overall presentation. And the reason why I think that is because they showed a decent variety of games. Some of it was unexpected, some of it obviously wasn't unexpected. Um, we got to see a bit more insight into things like Assassin's Creed, um, and there was that new pirate game which nobody saw coming, you know, the Skull and Bones I think it was called, that was quite intriguing. And just stuff like that. Um, and so that's why I think that they did the best. Do I think it was a very good E3 overall? No, I don't. I think it was a very forgetful E3. Um, the big players, Sony, Xbox, underwhelming, very underwhelming. Xbox, I was very impressed with the technology for the new console, the Xbox One X. Not a fan of the name, by the way. Very impressed with the technology. But then after that, where were the games? Nothing particularly interesting for me anyway, so I wasn't that interested in, in what Xbox had to say after they talked about the console. But other than that, the power of the console, very impressive. Um, but there's just no games that intrigued me, so there's no point getting a really powerful console if it's just going to sit there doing nothing. And price point wise, I guess it's kind of good because obviously it's basically, you know, it's ready to go uh, for, well, it's $500, but I don't know how, how much that works at the pounds. It's probably going to be about four something, 400 something. Um, but again, if there's no games to play, what's the point? And I could probably build a PC capable of 4K gaming for just a little bit more. Not quite that price, a little bit more, but you know, a, a wider variety of games and so if I was going to spend that sort of money I'd probably invest it somewhere else. Uh, I mean there's no first party titles like Uncharted or The Last of Us that really drew me in. I mean I don't know if there's that many first party titles at all for Xbox which are that compelling for me personally so that's why I don't have a console, Xbox console and even though I'm impressed with the Xbox One X I don't think I'm going to pick up an Xbox console either, not anytime soon or at least until they announce some decent titles. Sony, I was very underwhelmed by Sony. Very, very underwhelmed. Um, it was a short conference for starters, which was quite weird. They had like only a couple of people speak on the stage, when normally they have quite a few people come in and say a few things. Um, they had a few big titles, you know, under their belt, like Destiny and Call of Duty, and those th those segments were basically just trailers, and they weren't even good trailers. They were just box standard, in my opinion, just teaser trailers. I mean. Granted, Destiny had their big reveal a couple of weeks back, so I imagine they didn't want to share any more new information, or maybe they couldn't share any more new information. But, I mean, that's, that should have been a big thing at Sony, and it just wasn't. And then Call of Duty should have been huge. And again, I don't know if this is because Call of Duty, obviously, they're going to have their big reveal as well at some point in the summer, talking about multiplayer and all the rest of it. But, again, this is a, a, a massive opportunity for them to, sh to showcase something really good, and... I don't even know what the fuck the trailer is all about. I mean, I haven't even done a trailer analysis on my Aiken Vision channel because I don't really, I mean, it wasn't really well explained. I've had to look at other people's channels and, you know, watch other people's gameplays just to get an idea of what the game's about because the, 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 the segment that they showed at Sony, which should have explained everything, explained very little. I mean, it's World War II settings. What else did you pick up from that? I mean, I mean, the exact, the, there was nothing explained uh, in that segment. So I think it's a, a massive waste of an opportunity. I mean, thinking back a couple of years, Treyarch revealed Black Ops 3. They had a, a little, um, uh, little campaign segment. And then at the end, they said multiplayer is going to be coming in the summer. That's fine. They explained quite a lot in that segment. But yeah, with this um, and with the studio Sledgehammer Games, what did they explain? They explained nothing. Um, so I, I don't know. That's such a waste of opportunity. This would have been a great point to, to really sell the game, to talk about the changes that have made, to, I don't know, just big it up, you know? You, clearly they've been working on this for a while, so why would you waste this opportunity? All they had was literally a trailer, and it wasn't even a good trailer, just a trailer, and that was it, and it's such a waste. Um, I don't know. That's what I'd say. Um, as I said, they'll probably have their big reveal in the summer at some point, and of course a beta whenever it rolls around, and hopefully I get to take part, but I mean, as I said, like this would have been a great opportunity to try and sell the game to me, to make me want to pre-order, to make me want to, you know, get the beta code, but nothing. So, I don't know, whatever. I suppose I should move on before I uh, go into another rant and also the video is coming to an end, so I need to hurry up and cover the other topics I wanted to talk about. So, Nintendo, I don't know, I mean, I'm not a huge Nintendo fan, but if you are a huge Nintendo fan and you do like the games that they make, then I guess, you know, I 
for a lot of people uh, who are fans of Nintendo, my friends, for example, they say Nintendo won because Nintendo offered the most. Um, as, again, I'm not a huge fan of Nintendo. I don't have any of the current consoles and I don't really play any of their games. So I guess I'm a little bit, I can't really make an informed decision. Um, but I mean, I, again, if you're a big Nintendo fan, I can see why they would win it for you. Uh, likewise with Bethesda, though I think Nintendo probably nudged Bethesda in that department. Bethesda kind of showed off stuff that we were expecting. More versions of Skyrim, which, oh dear. And continuation of franchises that they've been working on and continue to work on. So again, nothing majorly surprising coming from Bethesda. Kind of, you know, a steady stream of games coming from them. Expected sort of games as well. Uh, and again, the stuff that they announced is all coming within the next you know, year or half year or whatever. So again, that's really good from Bethesda. That's what I like about them as a studio. They announce it, the game's coming. <laughs> Whereas some other studios announce a game and well, who knows when it's going to arrive. I mean, an example is Ubisoft and Beyond Good and Evil 2. I've never played the first game. The reason why it sort of intrigued me when I heard about it was because um, I watched quite a lot of GameSpot and the news presenter, Jess McDonald, she basically, she talks about this game all the time, or at least she mentions it from time to time and how it's just basically never coming. And suddenly it's been announced. And so I guess she's happy. I mean, I don't know her personally or anything, but I guess she's happy about that, the fact that it's coming out now. So that was like apparently five years in the making or something. And, you know, I mean, I'm all for games getting delayed, you know, so that they can be worked on. But, you know, I'd rather have an exact date of when the game's going to come out. Um, you know, ready to go rather than, oh, we're working on this game. It's probably going to come out here, but when it comes to that date, they push it back into six months. Oh, again, we're, you know, we were going to release it now, but we need a few more months, blah, blah, blah. And it just goes on and on and on. So I'd rather they just say, we're working on the game. Don't know when it's going to come. It'll come out when it's good and ready. I'm fine with that. I'd rather a game was perfected, like Uncharted 2, Uncharted 4, The Last of Us. I don't care how long it takes. If it's a masterpiece when it comes out, it is going to be worth the wait. Instead of, you know, hyping us up, saying a game's going to come out on this date and then letting us down. And then every time they do that, and, you know, sometimes it's more than once, it just sort of kills the whole experience, right? You, you don't, you, you get to the point where you, you're kind of half thinking, is it going to come out this time? Is it? Is it? And if it doesn't, then, you know, you get let down. And if it does come out, then you think, oh, well, it should have come out however many months ago. So it's kind of a lose-lose situation when you announce a game early and then have to delay it. Um, I mean, I, as I said, I understand that sometimes it's necessary or, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a better thing for it to be delayed so that you get a more polished version. But then if that's the case, don't, you know, don't announce it too early or don't give a, a solid concrete release date. Just say it's coming um, and then, you know, just work on it and then when you finish it, you finish it. Okay, so I think that's it. There's probably one or two other minor things. There was this other conference I watched and uh, it was done by Devolver Digital, I think. And then it wasn't until a couple of minutes in that I thought, okay, something's not right here. It's a bit of a joke. And then, yeah, the more I watched it, the more I realized they were just taking the mic, basically. And uh, just, you know, doing a bit of a joke regarding all the conferences that they do at E3. So that was quite funny. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch it. As I said, it's just a joke. It's just a bit of a laugh. Um, it's nothing serious. But if you want a bit of a giggle, then check it out. Uh, a couple of other games to know. Um, Shadow of Mordor 2. Haven't played the first one yet. I I think I have the game somewhere in my collection, but the reason why I mentioned that is because one of the characters that was featured in the gameplay, I think there was a, a, a British org or something, and the banter coming from him was funny. So that was really good. That was really noticeable. Um, I've already talked about the pirate ship game. Uh, again, it looks intriguing. I don't know if I'm going to play it, but it, it looks intriguing. It caught my attention. That's the whole point of these conferences. Spider-Man and the Sony, that kind of looked fun. Again, I don't know if I'm going to play it, but the fact that that was a highlight of the Sony conference when they had things like Destiny and Call of Duty, kind of says it all really I mean Sony did have Uncharted The Lost Legacy but I didn't watch any of that I skipped through it on purpose because I never watched stuff that I'm gonna get for sure so I ignored all of that um, whether it was good or not I can't say right so I'm gonna have to start wrapping up this video now because the gameplay is coming to an end um, as I said I will do a full patch breakdown of 1.09 on Acorn Vision as soon as it goes live there's no actual patch notes at the moment, but some people are reporting that they are able to download it. So as I said, I will cover that in Acorn Vision as soon as it goes live. And I will also mention it on this channel, you know, in other gameplay commentaries and whatnot. But for full details, head over to Acorn Vision. If the rumors are true regarding Platinum actually dropping today, along with the patch, then of course I'll be trying to get some gameplay and post it to the channel. And if there is any new content, as I said, hopefully I can unlock it in my pack openings and I'll talk about it here. 
Okay then, so until next time, if you enjoyed the content, consider tapping that like button, I really do appreciate it. If you've got any thoughts you'd like to share with me regarding any of the stuff I've talked about today, let me know in the comment section below. Did you have a particular winner from E3? Did you think it was a good E3? And did any particular game stand out for you? Right, so until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, take care, and I will see you later.